My name is Gus. I'm a second year graduate student at the University of Washington in the Miller Lab, and I'm going to tell you today about the work I'm doing at looking at structural variance in the thousand genome samples. So there are three key statistics that drive my research. The first is that over 50% of suspected Mendelian conditions remain undiagnosed after clinical testing. That is to say that if an individual goes in with an undiagnosed disease and they go through microarray, gene panel, exome sequencing, methylation studies, it's more likely than not that they will remain without a molecular diagnosis. The second is that most variation in the human genome consists of structural variants larger than 50 base pairs. Um, this is to say that if you compared any individual genome to the reference genome, it's not going to be SNPs and indels that cause the most difference between the two. It's deletions, duplications, insertions, inversions, and translocations that are bigger than 50 base pairs. And the last thing is that somewhere between half and two thirds of structural variants are not captured by traditional short read sequencing methods. Um, and so this leads to a problem with um, uh, databases of, of genetic variation missing out on a lot of the structural variants that are there. Um, I don't need to tout the benefits of long read sequencing to this audience, obviously, but to give a little bit of context for my project. Um, when we're looking at structural variants, short read sequencing, uh, sequences that are shorter than the length of the structural variant are going to be unable to fully resolve the structural variant. Long read sequencing, on the other hand, can span most structural variants in the human genome, um, and this gives us information on closer to the correct number of structural variants, around 25,000 per genome. And so with this information, I am trying to use um, normal or control uh, unaffected genomes to establish a, a database of common structural variants in a healthy, diverse population. Um, so to do this, in collaboration with the Eichler Lab at UW and then labs at um, the University of Nottingham and Northeastern University and Stanford, um, we are isolating DNA from biobank samples from the Thousand Genomes Project Consortium um, and doing high molecular weight DNA isolation and uh, ONT long read sequencing on them. Um, oh, sorry. Um, so far, we have sequenced, um, aligned, and assembled 168 of the samples from the Thousand Genomes Project, and these are all actually available online on AWS, and I will have a QR code to link to that at the end of the talk. Um, our ultimate, or sorry, our short-term short -term goal is to sequence around 800 of the Thousand Genomes samples. Um, ultimately, we would love to do the entire cohort of 3,200. Um, so I'll give you a brief overview of the analysis that we've done on the first 100 of the samples. Um, to answer the obvious questions that everyone has, um, I'm proud to say that the estimated coverage in N50s for these samples that we have uploaded to AWS um, meet the thresholds of being above 25x coverage and above 40x, uh, and, or sorry, 40 uh, KB N50s, um, with many of the samples exceeding those thresholds. Um, I'm also looking at the number of structural variants per individual uh, by four different methods, and for each method we're in the ballpark of 25,000 structural variants per genome, um, with samples of African ancestry having more structural variants per genome, which is to be expected. Um, here I have some histograms of the size of the structural variants that we're seeing across the samples. And while there's a lot of data here, um, the key takeaway is that we're seeing the characteristic profiles of the um, transposable elements, the signs and the lines in this data. So that is encouraging that we're uh, capturing structural variation as it should be. Um, one of the major challenges of looking at structural variants with long-range sequencing is that um, the boundaries can often be fuzzy. And so this is an example of three samples that all have the same uh, 250 base pair insertion, um, but you can notice that in each of the samples as well as in each of the reads that insertion is being called slightly differently. Um, and that can be an issue when we're trying to characterize structural variants in a database and say that these individuals have the same structural variant. Um, and so there are many groups working on resolving this problem. Um, I've been using a software called Jasmine out of the Schatz lab at uh, Johns Hopkins that uses a merging algorithm to determine whether or not these are the same. Um, and one of the applications that I've used with for Jasmine is um, 
building a plot of the cumulative increase in unique structural variance across the samples that we've analyzed so far. So all the way to the right is the, or someone in the last talk did this too. All the way to this side um, is the first individual um, with the expected 25,000 or so structural variance. And then each bar um, going to the other side uh, indicates structural variance that were um, not seen in the bar before. Um, and then I have African uh, ancestry samples all the way to the side because um, we would expect an increase um, in structural, a unique structural variance in those which we see. Um, so what can I do with this data? What's exciting about this? Um, the first thing is that I can start looking at population allele frequencies of structural variance in the first 100 samples. Um, I've made a very rudimentary shiny app uh, database of these, um, but this allows me to look at structural variance by gene and uh, chromosomal position um, and give us an idea of the structural variation happening in regions of interest. Um, ultimately, I would love for this to function similar to Nomad, where you can click on a structural variant and look at demographic information like ancestry and sex, um, also look at zygosity, etc. cetera. Um, another thing that we can do with this data um, is something that a colleague of mine, Sophie Gibson, who's another graduate student in the lab, has done. Um, this is an application that she built to look at the distribution of uh, short and ta uh, sorry, uh, tandem variable number tandem repeats, excuse me, um, across different samples. And so um, this is a distribution of one of the, um, the motifs of a, a, a repeat region. And you can see that even in our 1,000 genome samples, there's quite a wide distribution, including this um, uh, sample all the way to the side. It's a little bit of an outlier. Um, and then the thing that I'm most excited about using this data for is filtering for rare uh, disease causing structural variants in unsolved cases. And so I'm going to give you an example of a case where uh, short resequencing did not identify the causal variant in an individual, um, but it ended up being a, an ALU insertion that affected splicing. And so this individual had about 23,000 structural variants across their genome, um, and these were all called by SNPLs2. Um, I was able to use the first 100 samples from the 1000 Genomes Project to filter that down to 738 structural variants that were unique to that individual that were not seen in any of the 1000 Genomes samples. And this is based on merging using the Jasmine software. Um, I was further able to narrow that down to 244 structural variants that intersected with genes um, as defined by, uh, uh, these are not necessarily coding regions, but within 500 base pairs on the other side of an annotated gene. Um, and then within those 244 structural variants was, in fact, the one causal variant. So this is working pretty well. And I expect that with more samples being added to our 1,000 genomes side of things, we'll be able to narrow this down even further. Um, I have a pipeline that annotates these 244 uh, unique structural variants by structural variants that are uh, in segmental duplications, um, centromeres, telomeres, other uh, low complexity regions, as well as if they intersect with exons and if they intersect with genes that have OMIM uh, disease annotations. So with that, um, I'll conclude by saying that um, we can detect and refine more structural variants with long read sequencing than with short read sequencing. Um, we can use long read sequencing from samples from the 1000 Genomes Project uh, to develop a catalog of common human structural variants. Um, and we can use this catalog to filter for rare, potentially disease-causing variants in unsolved genetic cases. So with that, I'd love to thank the Miller Lab um, and all of our other collaborators and the NHGRI and the um, Gregor Consortium for funding this project. The QR code on this slide uh, will take you to our lab website, which has the link to the AWS that has all of the raw data from the samples that have been processed so far. Thank you.